don't we add to it a little bit of pizzazz? I mean, right? <laughs> dancing, singing. I, I guess this will not have such a good impact in the military. So, once a year, um, commanders from the same unit tend to meet for a strategic and tactic seminar. In these seminars, they discuss their weaknesses, strengths, collaboration, and agree on future plans. I facilitated some of my improv workshops in these seminars, attempting to fix this wrong interpretation of improv concept and introduce improv tools in order to make better units, collaborating, creative. And here are a few ideas that helped me to do so. Uh, first, I facilitate these workshops in civilian clothing. While in the military there is respect of the, for the chain of command and the highest rank in the room is superior, I, as a civilian, had the highest rank in the room. Therefore, automatically considered as an expert. I don't have to do anything, just appear. So how good is that? I use a lot of games that are very playful and say probably you know this one is the, the tiger, cow, and alien. And these games uh, that were, again, very, very funny and, and playful is a very unconventional way to interact in, in the military, a very formal organization. And these, these games enabled commanders to metaphorically peel their seriousness, ranks, and, and uniform, and play like kids. They, they could reflect on their decision-making process, and stay decisive, yet open, and, and we had a lot of fun. What really amazed me was that as higher I went up in the chain of command, the more commanders were ready to have fun and play and find relevance in the improv to their daily activity, commanding their units. I mean, maybe maturity or age, but it was very interesting. Um, lately, I end my, my sessions with this beautiful phrase by Bob Nelson, take your job seriously and yourself lightly. And I offer these commanders the opportunity to downsize their ego and be more accessible to their subordinates and, and really listen to them, which is, which is really fun. I completed over 100 workshops until today, and um, with the military, most of them, some of them were very <laughs> successful. Commanders share with me after sessions their attempts to apply yeah, improv in their uh, uh, in their daily activity. One one shared with me that he applied yes and in his staff meeting, encouraging his subordinates to bring creative and out of the box ideas that uh, that already he gained through that their ideas, new ideas, and new ways of training in a very traditional uh, organization, which was very nice. And I, I, I must say that a lot of the times in all the sessions I had a lot of fun, and we laughed a lot, and I do believe that humor is a great glue for a military unit. But to say the truth, sometimes I feel like I hit the glass ceiling. Uh, and this is, this is R.H., um, a good friend of mine, 20 years ago I was his deputy, and today he's one of the most decorated generals in, in the IDF. And with his unit's workshop, I felt I, I could break through his, his constant need to control the room. And I had difficulty convincing him that if he would let go for a minute the official military formality, he can gain his unit being independent and creative and collaborating. And actually, that's my mission. That's my mission here. To find a way that I can lead a significant process in the military that can leave real impact. Because I do believe that improv tools can make this wonderful and interesting organization called the military a better place. And that's my mission. I'd like you to help me achieve it. Thank you.